Today, we're gonna to continue with part two of updating our user interface for our Space Invaders app. Now, in order to get back to our Space Invaders app, we're gonna to need to open up App Inventor Designer window by opening a new tab or window in your browser and going to your App Inventor website. From here, you will need to log in using your Google student email address. Click on Create Apps. You will then need to click on your Space Invaders project to continue building your app. From here, we're gonna to need to add multiple components. We're gonna be inserting a horizontal arrangement today, along with a table arrangement, a score label, a score update label, a miss label, a miss update label, as well as a reset button and multiple sound effects. Now that we're ready to continue with our Space Invaders app, let's head over to MIT App Inventor. Once you're back into your MIT App Inventor and you're ready to continue building your app, we're gonna to need to go ahead and check a few things before continuing. The first thing we want to notice is, is our screen scrollable? Which means, do we have this bar on the right-hand side that allows us to scroll up and down? You can check that by clicking on screen one and in the properties, checking to make sure that that scrollable box is checked. Now that we're ready to move on, what we're going to add here is a horizontal arrangement. So we're going to need to go to our layout drawer. And from that layout drawer, we're going to grab this horizontal arrangement and we're going to make sure that we place this beneath our canvas. Now, once you drop it in, you may need to scroll down in order to see that arrangement. Once you have your arrangement set, we're going to need to go ahead and make sure that our align horizontal is set to center, our line vertical is set to center, and that our width is set to fill parent. Now, once we have that set, the next thing we can do is simply go ahead and change that background color, and we're gonna go ahead and make that black. That's gonna go ahead and match the rest of the screen for us. Now, once you have that horizontal arrangement in, the next step is to go and grab a table arrangement. Now, our table arrangement is going to be dropped inside of the horizontal arrangement. Once you drop it in the horizontal arrangement, you're gonna notice that it goes directly to the center of the screen. We're gonna to need to make sure that the columns and rows are both set to two. We're gonna go ahead and change the width of our table arrangement to 45%. Once you select okay, we're now ready to go ahead and add some of our components. The first component that we're gonna be adding is going to be a label, and we're gonna call this score label. So under the user interface, we're going to find a label and we're going to drag this label into column and row one. So notice that you have one box. This would be your first column in row one. Once you drop it in there, we're going to need to go ahead and select rename and we're going to call that our score label. You'll then need to go ahead and make sure that the font is both bold and italicized. We'll change the font size from 14 to 25. And then we'll go ahead and change the words text for label one to score with a colon and then a space. We'll also want to make sure that we change the text color from default to green so that it stands out. Once you've created your score label, the next step is to go and create our miss label. So in order to create our miss label, we're going to drag another label in and this is going to go into column one, row two. Once that's dropped in underneath the score, we're gonna go ahead and rename and call that Miss Label. We'll go ahead and make the font bold and italicized. The font will go to 25. We'll go ahead and change our text to Miss with a colon and a space. And then our text color for this one is going to be set to red. Now it's time to add the updates where our scores or misses will be shown. So we're gonna add an additional label here. This label is going to go into column two, row one, and we're gonna rename this as score update label. We'll go ahead and set the font to bold. The font size will be changed to 25. Our text will represent zero, and our color will be green to match the score. We'll do the same thing for our next label, which is gonna be the miss update label. This will go into column two, row two. We'll rename that to Miss Update Label. Again, the font will be bold. The font size will be 25. Our text will be zero. 
and our default color will be set to red to match our label. So now that you have all of your labels added, it's now time to go ahead and add our reset button. Now for your reset button, we're gonna be adding this within the horizontal arrangement, but it will be outside of the table arrangement. So in order to do this, we're gonna click on that button and we're gonna drag that to the right of that arrangement. Go ahead and drop that text for button one in there. We'll go ahead and rename that and call that reset button. And then from there, we're gonna need to change some of the properties. We're gonna make the background color cyan. We'll also go ahead and make this bold as well as italicized. The font size will be changed to 25. We'll go ahead and change the height to pixels. So we're gonna be using 50 pixels for the height and we'll be using 100 pixels for the width. We can also change the shape and we're gonna use an oval shape. And then we'll go ahead and change our text for button one to say reset. We'll go ahead and change the text color to be blue. So now that you've added your reset button, the last two things that we need to add are sound components. So we're gonna go ahead and find our first sound component, which is gonna be found under our media drawer. Once we go into that media drawer, we're gonna take that sound component and drag it onto the screen. Notice that this is another non-visible component. Let's go ahead and rename this and call this the Hit Rocket. Once we select OK, the next thing we need to do is add a source file to this. So our source file that we're going to be using is going to be this depth charge. So once we select the depth charge and hit OK, we now have our sound file ready to go. The last sound component we're going to use is for our saucer up at the top. So we'll drop another non-visible sound component We'll go ahead and rename that as hit saucer and we'll go ahead and change the source file over to laser. Once you select OK, you have now completed your user interface. You will need to go ahead and submit a screenshot of your user interface into your Schoology classroom. 